mustn't compare ourselves to regular people. We're artists. In the late 20th century, hostile forces inside the United States grow strong. The United States police force is formed. Los Angeles Island is declared no longer part of the United States and becomes the deportation point for all people found undesirable or unfit to live in the new moral America. The United States police force, like an army, is encamped along the shoreline, making any escape from L.A. impossible. From the southeastern hills of Orange County to the northwestern shore of Malibu, the Great Wall excludes L.A. from the mainland. And you mentioned wall. I mean, I will build the greatest wall that you've ever seen. And I would never do this myself, but I hope it's going to be so, and it actually will even look Great. I already know what it should look like. The president's first act as permanent commander-in-chief is Directive 17. Once an American loses his or her citizenship, they are deported to this island of the damned, and they never come back. Why are you here? I was a Muslim in South Dakota. All of a sudden, they made it a crime. I mean, why do you stay? South Mexico. Uh, LA is still the place, Snake. If you think about what's happened on the other side of the wall. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. You have no choice. We have no choice. Dark paradise. My name is Karina Ordonez. I'm an immigration attorney. But first and foremost, I'm human. I'm a woman. I'm a daughter. I'm a mother. And I'm a community member. And I stand before you today, and I'm inspired by this community. Mr. Trump, you are not just the president for a certain class for a certain race. You are our president, and you need to listen to us. This is your community. This is your nation. I am very emotional about it, because as an immigration attorney, as a criminal defense attorney, as a small business owner, I see the fear. I see the emotions that our people are living. And it's not fair. It's not right. He's trying to break the very core of our democracy. But you know what? We're stronger than that. This is what we are doing. We will use all of our rights. We will use all of our resources to make sure that our voices will be heard and our voices will be united. This is how we will show you that we're better than you. We're better than your policies. I will just pinpoint on one specific policy that he claims is to protect us from a national security standpoint. And it is banning our brothers and sisters, trying to not allow immigrants, whether they're non-immigrant or just immigrant seekers to our country. Part of these individuals that will be banned, there are brothers and sisters that helped us during the Gulf War. There are brothers and sisters that have shown that they are already our allies and our friends. And yet, even though Congress bipartisanly passed this law to protect them, to bring them here, to continue helping them, what does Mr. Trump do? He slaps them in the face and thanks them that way. That is not okay. That's a slap not only to our brothers and sisters and our allies, that's a slap to our military. I am sorry, Mr. Trump. You need to reconsider. You need to educate yourself and listen why your policies are not okay. And with that, I leave you. You were kicking around in the beginning. Now it's starting to get taken seriously. Here's an analyst on Fox News talking about it. 
Everybody likes her. I think Trump would be smart to choose. I know this is crazy. I know this sounds totally crazy, Charles. But I think he would be smart to pick his own daughter, put her on there and say, we're the Trumps. This is the family business. This is what we do. I'm going to make the big decision. She's going to run the day to day. And it's going to be fantastic. To the American people, now is the time to rise up and demand the surrender of the president and his corrupt theocracy of lies and terror. Today is day one of a brand new world. The days of empire are finished. To the president, my father, you know what's in here. And unless you open your borders, allow all the wrongfully accused to return to their country, I will use this on you and on the United States. <laughs> Basketball, two hoops, full court, 10 second shot clock. Miss a shot, you get shot. Shot clock buzzer goes off before you shoot, you get shot. Two points for a basket, no three point bullshit. All you gotta do is make 10 points, that's it. By the way, nobody's ever walked off that court alive. Nobody. A predominantly Latino school in Hammond, Indiana. They respond to what spectator Ashley Howard calls a very racist exchange started by rival team Andrean High School. Chants like build a wall and uh, please speak English, no comprende. Howard was disturbed by the exchange between the two Catholic schools. She shot this video and took pictures. An Andrean student holds this poster with the face of Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. This sign says ESPN Deportes in Spanish. That translates to ESPN Sports. But in this case, had the bolded T and E as in deport. It was sad to see. And the administration was standing right there. And they didn't step in and say, this is not all right. Give me those posters. The sixth man can swing a team's momentum to victory. Last night, Perry versus Dallas Center Grimes in district play. Unfortunately, at times things escalate, and it goes from simple cheers and chants uh, to more personal. In the second half, DCG students reportedly tapped into a presidential candidate's controversial stance on immigration. They're bringing crime, they're rapists. To intimidate a team largely comprised of minority players. They repeated Trump, Trump, Trump. They just heard Trump, Trump, Trump. Principal Dan Marburger says DCG school officials cut the chant quickly, but it took a harsh toll on his students. Many of these kids were born here in Dallas County, uh, and they just happen to be minority kids, but uh, they're born here and uh, have every right as anybody else does to be here. After the game, we found one DCG student tweeting, quote, Perry fans are the reason I want Trump to be our president. He has a question. Mr. Okay. Trump, there have been incidents. Hi, Hi, Mr. Trump. There have been incidents of children, of white children, pointing to their darker skinned classmates and saying, you'll be deported when Donald Trump is president. There have been incidents of white kids at basketball games holding up signs to teams which have Hispanic kids on them, saying, we're going to build a wall to keep you out. Are you proud of that? Is that something you've done in American political and social discourse that you're proud of? Well, I think your question's a very nasty question, and I'm not proud of it because I didn't even hear of it, okay? And I certainly do not like it at all when I hear about it. Uh, I have, you're the first one that's told me about that, but I, am, I would not be proud of that at all, and that's not what the purpose of it is. We want to make America great again. We want to bring back our industry. We want to bring back our jobs from China and Japan, and by the but, way, but, Mexico, but, but, which has but, taken but so many it, of our but, jobs, but, 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 and that's what it's about. about. I have not heard about you talk about uh, deporting people, and you talk about building a wall, and you talk about banning Muslims. I talk Doesn't about that deporting have people that are here illegally. On children? Okay. Doesn't and that I also have an talk about people the coming in, Koki. Discourse. I talk about deporting people that are here illegally. They're here illegally. We either have a yeah. country or we don't. I talk about deporting people that are here illegally. I also talk. 
Toki, I also talk about building a wall, and oftentimes I'll say, and there's going to be a big, beautiful door in that wall, and people are going to come into our country because we want people to come in. We want but, people but to come into children, our country, Mr. but we Trump. want them what to come in legally. What about what the children are hearing from you and how they are responding to it? Well, I think people are responding very positively. Children, I think I the ask. message is a very positive. Do you know, make America great again is a very positive message. It's not a negative unless message. You don't, and that's unless why you think America in, is great already. And a uh, lot of no, people I think, think America that America is right now very, very troubled. I think we're being laughed at all over the world. I think that if you look at our military, we can't beat ISIS. General George Patton, General Douglas MacArthur are spinning in their grave right now, Koki. We can't it, beat ISIS, okay? I think that our veterans are not taken care of. They're treated worse than illegal immigrants, by the way. You want to talk you've about had, a problem. Had a our educational system you. is at the bottom of the heap worldwide. We're doing horribly with education, and yet we're number one in cost <laughs> per pupil. Yeah, I think we have a lot of problems. Obamacare is a disaster. It's got to be repealed and replaced. It's it's a disaster. People are, are Obamacare has not worked. It's going to die of its own volition, but it's better if it gets terminated and if we come up with something good. No, we have, if you say America is great right now, uh, America is a very troubled, a very, very troubled nation right now. Don't right. And we, on top of it all, we owe $19 trillion. Where he said he has no control over prices, which he does if he gets on the phone or gets off his uh, basketball court or whatever he's doing. Yeah, I guess so. You got to smoke. The United States is the no-smoking nation. No smoking, no drinking, no drugs, no women. Unless, of course, you're married. No guns, no foul language, no red meat. Land of the free. And then we have to take care of the people that can't take care of themselves, and I will do that through a different system. Hey, Mr. Right. Trump. Shut down the third world. They lose, you win. Shut down America. You lose, they win. The more things change, the more they stay the same. The presumptive Republican nominee has been the target of a highly unusual opinion by a Supreme Court justice. Here's Major Garrett. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, long among the most liberal voices on the court, spoke fearfully of a Donald Trump presidency. I don't want to think about that possibility, but if it should be, then everything is up for grabs, she told the Associated Press. In another interview with the New York Times, Ginsburg said, I can't imagine what the country would be with Donald Trump as our president. Ginsburg also accused Trump of holding no firm political beliefs. He is a faker, the 83-year-old justice told CNN. He has no consistency about him. He says whatever comes into his head at the moment. The uh, Republican nominee is unfit uh, to serve as president. Uh, I said so last week, and uh, he keeps on proving it. The fact that he doesn't appear to have basic knowledge around uh, critical issues means that he's woefully unprepared uh, to do this job.